welcome to mini tutorials in spectroscopy. Let's talk about the rotational Raman effect. Rotational Raman transitions arise from inelastic light scattering processes wherein the molecule changes rotational state but not vibrational state. During the scattering process we find that the total angular momentum quantum number can change by plus two units leading to a series of lines to slightly lower wave number of the Rayleigh scattered laser line. Assuming a rigid rotor approximation, we see that these rotational Stokes lines may be described by nu naught minus the change in rotational energy, where nu naught is the laser wave number and j is the j value of the initial state. Similarly, scattering processes that result in de-excitation of the molecule give rise to anti-Stokes lines to the high wave number side of the Rayleigh line. We can also prepare a general solution to calculate the wave number of these transitions where nu naught is the laser wave number and j is the j value of the initial state. However, if we instead set j as the j value for the lower energy state, we see that the anti-Stokes scattered photons gain the same energy that is lost by their Stokes counterparts. Thus we see that rotational Stokes and anti-Stokes transitions are both formally S-type transitions, wherein the excited J value is two units larger than the ground state J value. Let's calculate the first Stokes and anti-Stokes lines for the fictional waterlunium dimer. Note that the molecule has a rotational constant of B equals 2.0 reciprocal centimeters, and it is interrogated with a laser of 500 nanometer wavelength. Following unit conversion, we see that the incident light has a wave number of 20,000 reciprocal centimeters. The first line in the Stokes rotational branch involves an excitation from J equals 0 to J equals 2. The first anti-Stokes rotational line occurs when light scatters off of a molecule in the J equals 2 rotational level, causing de-excitation to J equals 0. Knowing that f of j equals b times j times j plus 1, we can calculate the rotational level energies. Since the energy gap between the j equals 0 and j equals 2 levels is equal to 6b, we find that the first rotational Stokes line occurs at 19,988 reciprocal centimeters, and the first anti-Stokes line at 20,012 reciprocal centimeters. I hope that you found this short video on rotational Raman spectroscopy useful. See you next time.